Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to talk about variables in Golang. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. It'll help the channel a lot. So last time we were talking about uh, test.go and we made a hello world program. So I'm going to open that up. So we had a package definition and it's package main. So that was creating our binary. We're importing a library called FMT or format. And then we have our main function, and this is where our program actually begins. And then we're using uh, the code from that imported library, so format.println, and that prints a line. And then we printed a line called Hello World Digital Forensics Rocks. Okay, so we're just going to modify this a little bit. Maybe we want uh, the text to change sometimes. So what we're going to do this time is create something called a variable. And the variable uh, is just a kind of a temporary holder that you can change the contents of. And we're going to create a string variable. So I'm because I know that my variable is going to be a message, I'm going to call it message. So I'm just going to say message one. And then in Go, when we're creating a new variable, we're going to initialize it with a colon and then equals. And that's basically saying message one uh, is a new variable that equals, and what is it going to equal? Well, we're going to make it equal a string, and I'm just going to put hello world uh, in here. Okay, so message one equals hello world. And then if I make another variable called, let's say, message two, message two equals, I'm also initializing it with a colon uh, because it's a new variable. So hello world two, or sorry, message two. And we'll say digital forensics box. Okay, so now uh, instead of printing this entire line, I have these two variables that I that I want to print. Okay, and let's say that I, I still want to print them on the same line. So instead of printing um, uh, the whole string or writing the whole string out in print line, I can just do msg one, and then. Um, Unlike some other programming languages, uh, Go has a nice feature of just doing uh, concatenation like plus MSG2. Now, uh, think about this for a second. We're doing here message one plus message two. Well, these are strings. They're not numbers, right? So we're not adding two numbers together. Since we can't add strings, what are we doing? Well, we're combining them. We're concatenating them together. Um, some people might not like this form, and in Go you can do it a couple different ways, but this is one of the easiest ways, so we'll show you it first. So now I have message one plus message two. Well, what do you expect to happen? Well, hopefully you expect message one uh, to print here and message two to print here, okay? And then you would see one line uh, with them all together. So let's test it out. If you hit Control O, then you'll save the file hit enter to save and then control X to get out of it. And if we do LS, we need to build the program again. I'll just run test uh, the old test. This is before. So you can see what it looked like before. Hello world exclamation point space forensics rocks exclamation point. Okay. So then let's build, uh, sorry, go build uh, test.go then run dot test again. Okay, so now what's different? We have hello world, exclamation point, and then no space, and then digital forensics rocks. Well, why was there no space? Let's go back and look at this for a second. So nano test.go. Okay, so now in here, this is the problem. I don't have any spaces uh, at the beginning of my message too. It just literally took hello world, and then added it with Digital Forensics Rocks and concatenated them together. Now what I could do is just add a space uh, at the beginning of this. But if I want to use this message somewhere else, and it's a variable, so we probably want to use it many different places, uh, that wouldn't be a very good solution because it doesn't really, it works for this problem, but it might not work for other problems. Okay, so we don't want to add that space to the beginning. What we can do instead is uh, go to the print line uh, uh, line 
and then do plus, and then since we're concatenating strings, we can just do a uh, empty space. So here what I did is I have my message one plus quotes, which is a empty string or a single space, plus message two. Okay, so now I have added a space in between Digital Forensics Rocks, and I'm gonna actually add a couple more spaces just so we can see that this is actually working, okay? Uh, or I'll tell you what, space dash space, okay? So if you see a dash in the middle, that is this uh, string that we're concatenating in the middle here. So control O, enter, control X, and then I need to build again, so go build, test.go, then dot slash test, hello world, space, dash, space, digital forensics rocks. Okay, so that's pretty much all there is to uh, assigning variables. Let's go back in. Uh, whenever you're establishing or making a new variable, you need the variable name and make sure it's something that actually makes sense for what it is. Don't just call it, for example, um, I could have just called this one. I could have just said one equals uh, hello world, something like that. Well, if it's a message, call it message. Uh, try to be as specific as possible for what that variable is holding, because if you are if you don't have good variable names, whenever you go check your code later, it might be hard to read. Uh, in Go, the first time that we're uh, establishing the variable or setting up the variable, we need to use a colon. The second time, we do not. So um, let me show you what that looks like if we don't set uh, the colon at the beginning. So let me build again. Yep, so command line arguments, undefined message one. So see, whenever we tried to build, we got that error uh, that message one has a problem. So let's go back and let's establish it with the semicolon equals. Okay, so now it's already set up. Now, uh, the second time or you try to use the variable, uh, you don't need to use the colon again because it's already been kind of created. So let's do message one equals different text. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm setting the variable message one. I'm creating it for the first time and I'm setting it to hello world. Then I set hello uh, message two. I'm creating it for the first time and I'm saying digital forensics rocks. Then I'm going back and I'm changing the value of different uh, of message one to different text. So the first time I had a semicolon because I was creating that variable. The second time I don't have the semicolon because it's already created. I'm just changing the value. So now what do we expect to happen? What do we expect to print out if we build this program? So let's go out, see if you can guess uh, what it would be printing out. So dot slash test, different text, dash digital forensics rocks. Now notice this doesn't say hello world anymore because we completely changed everything inside the message one variable. And that's the whole point of variables is that you can change them to whatever you want. In most cases, that's what you want to do, okay? So whenever you're establishing variables, make sure you use a colon. Uh, the second time or any other times after that that you use that variable in Go, you don't need to use a colon. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it for variables. Uh, it might seem a little bit silly, like if you've never used variables before, you might be thinking, why would we ever use these? But this is kind of the core of everything. Uh, variables come in extremely handy later, so just know that a variable is a temporary container that we can put things in and change their values. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. Also, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Your support lets us focus on making better tutorials for everyone.